This video introduces the boat diagrams for lead compensators. Now a reminder of the overview. We're looking at things like frequency response and how do we compute this efficiently. And the reason why we've been doing that is ultimately we want to look at feedback loop analysis. And this particular video is going to focus on the boat diagrams for lead compensators. So later on, we can look at the effect that lead compensators have on boat diagrams for a loop transfer function. And of course, that relates back to feedback loop analysis and design. What then is the def definition for a lead compensator? Well, we've given that here. You can see it's given as K times S plus A over S plus beta A. And specifically, we need to notice that beta is between 1 and 10. So in other words, the pole has a larger magnitude than the zero. Here's a typical example. 6 times s plus 1 of s plus 4. And you can see clearly the zero is at 1, the pole is at 4, or minus 1 and minus 4. And so the pole has a larger magnitude than the zero. In this particular case, we've got k equals 6, a equals 1, and beta equals 4. So what we'll do next is we'll sketch the boat diagram for this compensator. First, we'll go back and use the asymptotic approaches. So we've reminded you of what the lead is up here. And you'll see that if omega is less than 1, then the gain asymptote is going to be 6 over 4, or 1 and a half, and that's about 3 and a half decibels. And the phase asymptote will be 0. If 1 is less than omega is less than 4, then we'll have a gain asymptote of plus 20 decibels per decade, that's the slope, and the phase asymptote at 90. And if omega is bigger than 4, we'll have a gain of 6, that's from the k, and well, that's about 15.6 decibels, and a phase asymptote of 0. Some corrections that we can put in. First, let's write down what the argument of this lead is exactly, and there it is tan to the minus 1 of omega minus tan to the minus 1 of omega over 4. So if I substitute in the values of the corner frequencies, omega 1 and omega 4, you'll notice they both give the same value. They both give me 30 degrees. So let's take this data now and let's do some sketching. Now you'll notice we've done the sketches for you just to keep things neat. So first if I look at the game plot, you'll see at low frequency we said we had 3.5 decibels. That was the asymptote. And there's omega equals 1. And then for omega bigger than 4, you'll see we said we had nearly 16 decibels. There's that asymptote there. And in between, we had a slope of 20 decibels per decade. If I now do a smooth gain sketch between those points, you'll see the red line was already there. It's pretty difficult to get a line which is far away from the asymptotes anyway and is still smooth. So what do you notice? The key thing is the gain is high at high frequencies and low at low frequencies. So that's a characteristic of a lead compensator. What about the phase? You remember the phase asymptotes? We had 0 up to omega equals 1. And then you go up to 90. We had 90 to omega 1 and 4. Then you come down. And then you had 0 again. And we calculated exact values at omega equals 1 and 4, and we said the exact values, there they are, were 30 degrees at the corner frequencies. So again, if we do a smooth plot from the asymptotes and through those crosses, we'll get something like this. So what do you notice? The phase is greater than 0, and in particular, the greatest bit is around the corner frequencies. So let's summarize this. Look at the key properties. So there's our lead compensator. We've noticed that the steady state gain is smaller, that's the key word, than the high frequency gain by a factor of beta. So the high frequency, the gain is k. And at low frequency, the gain is k over beta. And you can see those things directly from this formula here. In terms of the phase, the phase is 0 at high and low frequency, and the phase is positive, that's the key thing, around the corner frequencies and largest between the corner frequencies. Here's another example. You'll see it's a different lead compensator, and you'll see the same pattern. So we've got low gain at low 
frequency and high gain at high frequency and that's classic for a lead compensator and similarly you'll notice you've got positive phase and in this particular case I'll mark the uh, corner frequencies the corner frequencies were at 1 there's 1 and at 5 so there's 5 and what you notice you see you've got this large slope between the corner frequencies so that's where the transition in gain happens and you've got the large phase between the corner frequencies so that's where you get the most phase so to summarize some of the questions we might want to ask how does the phase characteristic depend on the zero pole ratio it's not just is it positive but how big is it how exactly does it depend on this ratio and how does the gain characteristic depend on the pole zero ratio so what's the difference between the high frequency gain and the low frequency gain and ultimately you want to ask questions like how do I choose the pole zeros of my compensator in order to get an effective lead design now this is covered in later videos but what you should notice is you would typically expect the corner frequencies to be near the gain crossover frequency so let's summarize the characteristics in more detail so you'll see these ones are by inspection the low frequency gain is at K over beta and that should be obvious just looking at this lead compensator and the high frequency gain is K so those are the easy ones so what do we get the ratio of the high to low frequency gains is beta okay so if I do my little sketch and the lead compensator is doing this what we're saying is this ratio is beta I'm multiplying by meter to get from the low frequency to the high frequency now, a typical lead design focuses on the choice of beta, not K. But something that you need to notice, we're not going to do it in this video, but later, is the reason why is that beta has a big impact on the phase characteristic, not the gain characteristic. So ultimately, we're going to try and ignore this characteristic. I won't go into it now, but we need to be aware of it. <laughs> What about the phase characteristic then, as this is the most important one? Well, the phase of the lead is given by this formula here. Tan to the minus 1, omega over A, minus tan to the minus 1 of omega over beta A. And we notice, for this to be a lead, we've assumed that beta is always bigger than 1, and therefore, this formula will always be positive. Hopefully, it's obvious that tan to the minus 1 of omega over A must be bigger than tan to the minus 1 of omega over beta a so we get a positive argument next thing the argument at the corner frequencies which is omega equals a and omega equals beta a must be the same now you can prove that just by substituting the corner frequencies in so you'll see at omega equals a this is the phase tan to the minus 1 of a over a minus tan to the minus 1 a over beta a and at beta a this is the phase tan to the minus 1 beta a over a minus tan to the minus 1 beta a over beta a and with a little bit of algebra you'll see that these both give you 45 minus tan to the minus 1 1 over beta so they are the same and that's quite convenient because as with the lag compensator for those who remember that video you'll see there's a symmetry and that symmetry helps with sketching now where does the largest phase occur and in fact this is quite important because this is something that we will use later in design now we're not going to prove it but we're going to tell you that the largest phase occurs at the geometric mean of the corner frequencies omega m equals a over root beta and that's sort of intuitively obvious but if you really want to prove it use some calculus differentiate this formula here with respect to omega and find the maximum and you'll see it's at the geometric mean a root beta now if I substitute that in there it goes so there's the phase tan to the minus 1 a root beta over a minus tan to the minus 1 a root beta over a beta you get this tan to the minus 1 root beta minus tan to the minus 1 1 over root beta and using your rules to add inverse tans together you'll find you can reduce it to this nice formula here tan to the minus 1 root beta minus 1 over root beta 
all over 2. And the key thing is, you'll see it depends only on beta. So A doesn't come into it. So the largest phase depends solely on the ratio of the pole 0 and nothing else. Now what we can do is, we, therefore, we can calculate all these phase peaks offline. We can say if beta equals 2, what's the maximum phase? Well, it's 19. If beta equals 3, what's the maximum phase? Well, it's 30. If beta equals 4, the maximum phase is 37. And all the way up to beta equals 10, when you get a phase of 55. Now, you can always go back to this formula. But if you've got the table, then you can very quickly say, for a maximum phase rotation of about 50 degrees, for example, I know I need beta about 8. So I suggest it's always better to have the table to hand, but if you really need to, you can always go back to the formula. So let's do some sketching. Sketch the bow diagram for the following lead compensator. So I've got 2 times s plus 0.5 over s plus 3. In this case, beta is 6, k is 2, and a is 0.5. So let's find the first find the key values. So the low frequency gain is going to be given by 2 times 0.5 over 3, which is a third. The high frequency gain is going to be 2, which is about 6 decibels. And I should have worked out the third before, but I think that's going to be of the order of minus 10 decibels. What about the key phase values? Well, because beta is 6, I look for my table and I can see that it's 46 degrees. And this will be at the geometric mean, which means it's be at the square root of 0.5 times 3. But down here, we've got at low frequencies, we're pretty close to 10 decibels. And then we run up to the first corner frequency, which was at 0.5. Okay. And then the second corner frequency here was at 3, and after 3 we had about 6 decibels, and in between the two we have our 20 dB per decade. And then using a sort of symmetry argument and going through the midpoint, and if you want to, using the fact that these offsets are going to be approximately 3, probably a little bit less, you can get a nice smooth game plot for this. And again, you see the key characteristics, high gain at high frequencies, low gain at low frequencies, with the transition happening largely between the corner frequencies. What about the phase? Well, again, we had a zero phase at low frequencies for the asymptotes. And then at 0.5, the asymptotes go up to 90. And then at 3, they come back to zero. But the key thing is, we knew what the phase peak was. There it was. It was at 46 degrees, and it was at approximately one point. Was it? Um, it was the root of two, wasn't it? So it was about 1.4 root two. Now, we could also, if we wanted, calculate these two points here, and given that, we should be able to get a smooth phase curve like that. So this video has presented a lead compensator and the associated Bode diagrams. We've demonstrated that a lead compensator has got a large gain at high frequency compared to low frequency and a positive phage in the region of the corner frequencies. Now students should note that it's the phase characteristic which is the most important one in design and this will be discussed in later videos.